Blastoff. And we should be oh, live. Oh, the, the German there. Uh, yes. The Blastoff. Blastoff. Or Russian. Or maybe. That too, yeah. Or we don't. Number five is a lot. <laughs> no, yeah. it's December. No. Well, whilst we're. Whilst I guess we're in this moment, did you watch any Futurama? I've been watching Futurama uh, for the last two weeks. It's my comfort show. And yes, I did watch the new episode. Um, I, I think it was a, it's a decent, you know, like it's not great, but it's also not terrible. Yeah. That's you probably know? my opinion of it as well. It's not terrible. Yeah. But it's not, I didn't, as a season it's... opener this time around, I didn't think it was that good. I, I would say compared to the other season or op seasoners, seasoner openers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. But, um, but compared to some of the really crap episodes that have been put out in these last newer seasons. Uh, um, yeah, so a lot of stuff of season 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the worst episode. Right. Which I was happy. But, I was like, okay, well, it's not the worst, so I, I can live with that. Yeah. Did it sort of feel like that it was written two years ago and then it became culturally irrelevant? Yeah. It did have that feeling, yes. Um, which is weird. But, you know. Oh, that's also weird. <laughs> no, I was um, recentering my camera because ah. it looks weird that I'm not actually in the center frame. That's what they all say. Yes. <laughs> I might need to actually ah. open the chat. Oh, yeah. Check all Maybe my the rewards on your channel. I didn't get. I didn't get a go live message. Uh, we are live. I know, but I hope it went out. In what way? The little go live message. I hope it went out so people what, will know. On Discord. Where... Yeah. No. No. The the Twitch one. Oh. Hello, Denka. Hello. Hello, hello. I actually can't even see the chat. I can see it, but I can't interact with it. Uh... Yeah, that's just not it. Like, if Danker's in there, though, I can't even... Oh, there we go. Danker, cool. if you don't mind, did you get a Twitch notification for Rapid Reviews? No, see, it hasn't gone out on our Discord yet. But that is usually lagging yeah, behind anyway. That's weird. Nope. See? Twitch is busted. Holy crap. We're not going to have anybody tonight. I mean, All right, well, I guess I'm going to have to tweet it out then. Yeah. Hmm. And I don't think I can do like a manual resend. That's very strange. Twitch, you so crazy. That's why uh, Nana and Brinto are not here. Because they usually click. Yeah, I would imagine they do. Very, very strange. Something strange on this podcast. Well, something strange on Twitch. Cause... On the Twitch. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm going to say Twitch is a pile of crap at times. I can't say that because I'm trying to make affiliate. I love Twitch. I honestly couldn't care. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Danker says, who are you going to call? Someone that can program better. <laughs> who are you going to call? Uh, yeah. Someone who isn't like... Amazon. That's true. I am sweating to death. I'm going to turn my fan on. If it's too loud, let me know. My fan is now on. I don't think it's showing up on the volume thingies. I can't hear it. Good. Good. But I guarantee that I'll hear it when I start recording. Yes, probably. Which I'm going to find out now. Do that. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm really, test, I'm really annoyed that that did not go out. Not peeking. Good. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. 
I can have a fan on, even though it's like 16 oh, degrees here. Okay, yeah, so this is why, because it looks like Twitch have updated all their OS and everything. So they've broken it again. Oh, great. Yay. Huzzah. Well, Thanks, we'll give. Twitch. We will give Chatteruni uh, extra time yeah. to filter okay. in. All right, because... I'm checking my sound. So sex. All right, fine. Oops, sorry, I did not mean to blow in the mic. I've got to get used to having a freaking face mic. I'm not used to it. Hello, Nana! Hello! Y'all been watching the Olympics. I have been watching the updates. <laughs> a lot of Northern Irish people have been winning medals, so I'm quite happy. Uh, I haven't been watching any of the Olympics. I'm not really into athletics. I... I... The only thing I usually do watch is the track and field, but that was mostly when I was living at home with my parents because my dad was obsessed with it. I'm just not a big fan. I like to watch the gymnastics part. And then the Winter Olympics, I like to watch the ice skating. No, yeah, I like to watch the snowboarding. Oh, yeah, that's always cool, too. Man. Maybe I will go oh, I'm just checking. Sorry, I'm just checking this file again. Um, can I get another test from you? Another test. Thanks. What was that you were saying about skiing? I was going to go skiing this year. Um, I might still. I don't know. I'm kind of probably going to go chill in Italy for a bit. Yeah, I do love Italy. Uh, I'd recommend skiing if you could go. It's great. Oh, notifications got out on Discord finally. Yay. I don't want to go skiing by myself. That's the thing. You meet lots of people. It's fine. True. <laughs> oh, you Brent. Hello, bueno, Brintamente. So, let me ask Nana and Brent. Did you two get a Twitch notification for this one? Because none of us have. <laughs> and I'm worried a bit about that. <laughs> also, I have wine. Whee! I'm drinking that. I don't know if you can see it. I can now. Oh, Hardy's. Okay, cool. Yeah, Chardonnay. Oh, Bryn says he got two Twitch notifications. <laughs> so he got he got mine and his, apparently. <laughs> well, he got everyone's, clearly. Yeah. That's so weird. Okay. Well, I'm glad someone got one, at least. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, then. I'm redeeming my own wine. Of course you are. But how is everyone tonight? We're gonna start here in just a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm just loading my loading all my my, my bits. That's what she did. Uh huh. Oh dear, dear. Well, I meant all my links for the show. Oh no, I hit something. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh no! Well oh, done. I keep messing with stuff. I need to stop messing with things. Yeah, can you stop? Because that's probably why notifications didn't go out. No, this is in Streamlabs. Oh, what have I done? Oh, what um, have I done? What have I, done? I don't even know. I don't even dare up, like open the fucking stream. Oh, oh no! Email. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, oh goodness! I lost chat. No, come back, chat. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh dear! Um, Welcome to this professionally run podcast <laughs> and Twitch stream. What have I we done? We still don't have a clue what the hell what we're doing after all this time. Oh no! Okay, can I manually do this? Let me. <sighs> yeah, I am. I, I've adjusted my gain to fit with the audio file so Cardi you might have to boost me on the stream side. Oh okay. Ha <laughs> I'm always a little high. Um <laughs> yeah. Daker says she did a thing not for the best. Yeah I'm very confused at what I've done. Yeah you're very you feel very Clarkson at the moment. I did a thing. I did a thing <laughs> Wait let me find out how to um well, crap and a half. 
Oh no. Oh no. I'm doing worse things. Don't don't do those things. Why is this like this? Why am I like this? Well, why are why are you the way that you are? I don't know. I yeah. am going to be flying blind here. Oh no. Oh no. I've oh dear. Okay. I've have you made broken it, worse. it even more? I have. Oh, oh. shit. Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not touching anything else. Take her says, don't touch anything, Carly. Next, you take it offline. Okay. Yeah, just don't do anything. I'm going to leave it as it is. <laughs> yeah, it says, don't touch anything else. Why did you put me in charge of this, Pete? <laughs> because you're the only one who knows how to use... Streamlabs or OBS or whatever you use. A terrifying thought. Uh, but yes, yeah, so here's here's the long and short of it. I can't see me or Pete, but I can hear us and I can see chat and that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, uh, can it at least oh, cool. be seen on the Twitch? Yes, I'm assuming that they can see us. I'll, I'll turn myself down a little bit because I think I might be yelling. Um... Then it says, oh, I also was playing around with the new clips editor. It's pretty decent. Very cool. Very cool. Cool. I'm not sure there's been anything clip worthy recently, though. Yeah, but Nana's a pro clipper. I really hate not being able to see. <laughs> but if I touch it, it will mess up. That's what she said. I'm not um, touching that. <laughs> okay, right. So, so we'll give them a couple of minutes. So, I guess I'll take this moment to ask the de the 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 dreaded question: Have you been to a cinema yet? No, believe it or not, I am having some confidence issues at the moment, but I shall so conquer I them. So I have seen Deadpool and Wolverine before a yeah. Deadpool fan. Yes, you have. You have. I am But I will rectify disappointed this. in you. I know. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm gonna rectify this though. I might be going with uh my trainer, Tegan. Oh, okay. Cause I'm uh, just... Nana, if you want to hear my thoughts, the Neville Watchers Deadpool and Wolverine episode is currently out now. <laughs> We recorded it on Wednesday, and it was out by Thursday. Eee. Oh, we wanted to actually get a film, uh, one out for a current yeah, film. That's a rarity. Really that's very good. Don't worry, we did tell everyone that it was very spoiler-heavy, so... Because uh, uh, that was a bit of a shit show. Going yeah. on to going to watch the film, and then literally waking up the next morning to find clips everywhere. Oh, I'm sure. I Because, yeah, I've been avoiding them. Yeah. To be fair, I you... haven't been on the internet. <laughs> yeah, but then you go on to any like group that has, or Facebook post or whatever is that's spoiling it, and you go, can you not spoil a film that's been out for less than 24 hours? And they're like, get off social media. It's like... Ugh. People are what? dicks. Yep, they are. People are I did dicks. See... I did see something interesting, though. What's that? So I was watching through um, a lot of the top six from Evo. Uh-huh. Uh, because it was a couple of weeks ago and I didn't get a chance to watch it live. Mm -hmm. um, what The top comment on the Street Fighter 6 top 6 was um, spoiler blocker. Huh. So because people were putting the results down and putting yeah. down like their comments about it, so people were upvoting the comment that said spoiler blocker to stop people from spoiling That's it. That's cool. That's cool. Sometimes people The internet can things. be cool. I was going to say. Okay, Pete. Most of dicks. Anyway. Most people are dicks. That's today's yes. episode. <laughs> uh, you might be hitting onto a theme somewhat there. Ooh. I haven't even sent you the story, so you don't know. No, I am coming by these completely organically. As we like yes. it, yeah? On the repository. Yeah, that's only because I put it together this morning and I was like, oh, I had other things to do. Oops, forgot to send it to uh -huh. you. That's all right. As I said, I haven't been on the internet. I don't check anything. Uh, now, how do you how do you know? Have you got access to my Google Docs? <laughs> if you do, then please get out. 
There's some um, <laughs> links in there I don't want anyone mm. seeing. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we know where N those links are. Not really. Um, not okay. really. Do we want to start this thing? Because I think oh, this is yeah, it. I, I so. don't know I what so. happened. I don't know what's going on with Twitch. Ta -da! <laughs> and there I was last week singing your praises about how you can manage a stream, but yet yeah, you can't even manage a stream anymore. Ta -da! <laughs> Not that anyone's heard that episode yet. No, that's true. So we'll see. Right. Uh, two oh five, by the way. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. Right. I'm recording. So, three, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rapid Reviews Radio Podcast, episode two zero five. Two oh five, which is insane. Um. Oh, I've just found out from our lovely chat that our redeems are turned off. Uh, if you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, you have to come visit us over at twitch.tv forward slash rapid reviews and come watch us uh, live. So, yeah, I think Twitch has been messing with some stuff. <laughs> After this episode is over, I will go and try and fix the streamy stuff. Uh, because it seems a little cray cray. But anyway, all of that aside... I'm your co-host, Kylie Wilde, and I am joined by my ever-present co-host, Pete Beckett. Screw Twitch, hello. <laughs> I don't care. Uh-huh. Um, We're already affiliate. What are they going to do? Kick us out of the affiliate? Oh, wait. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, but I like to start off every week by asking, how has your week been, Pete? Uh, busy. Very, very, very busy. Um, mostly all stuff I will not discuss on, on the internet. Um, but personal stuff, let's mm. say. Um, so yeah, mm, been busy. Been a nice week though, let's say. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to play games, so I'll only talk about the two that I have been playing briefly. Because they're, they're recurring games, let's be right. honest. Because I'm probably going to play those for a fair while. Um, I got about, I don't know, about 45 minutes worth of Forza Horizon 4 in on PC. Very nice. Um, so, uh, just playing through that again. Because, why not? Right. I bought it on Steam because it was cheap. And, yeah, I still really enjoy it. Really enjoy the game more than I did with 5. To anyone that I nominated for the game of the year. Yes. One of the years, because it's an excellent game. Uh, it's still really tight, still really fluid, and still really fun to play. Um, I think so far I've just I've got up to the second movie shoot, so I haven't been playing it for very long again. But I'm still really enjoying it. But I'm just waiting till I can get through all the seasons and do that final mission because that final mission is excellent. That's very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. I, the only other game that I have gone. Okay, sorry. I just noticed uh, Brent's comment of wish me luck with surviving Hurricane Debbie later this week. Holy crap. Yeah, good Definitely luck. Good luck with that. For yeah. sure. Don't wish hurricanes upon anyone, but hey. No. Um, the only other game I've been playing, and I've been playing a little bit more of it whilst I can. I think I got a few hours in the other day whilst I was just sitting at home doing nothing. Uh huh. More Terraria. Oh, of course. So, um, I think the last time I spoke about this, um, I was, I actually was last week when I was on another podcast. Oh my God, another podcast. Oh, it's not out yet, so you can't hear it. So this might feel a little bit, like that will feel outdated by the time you <laughs> listen to this. Um, I was, um, I was mining, mining down to the underworld. Right. So, uh, in the meantime, I think the last time I spoke about it on this podcast, I was uh, just looking. Um, I was just looking around in the world, just trying to find stuff to do. So, uh, I believe uh, I was trying to find the hive. I managed to find the hive and defeat the Queen Hornet. Nice. Uh, I also defeated Skeletron, so I'm now able to access the dungeons. Ooh. And the dungeons are. Uh, they're pretty intense this time around. But what I managed to do the other day was um, mine 
downwards into the underworld, built a very large platform that enables you to obviously go and fight the last boss that is in medium core before it goes into the hardcore mode. Right. Which is the Wall of Flesh. Oh, nice. Um, nice. <laughs> I am really annoyed by that because I got within uh, 600 HP of killing the thing on the first try. Right. Uh, it. I died, and now I cannot respawn the Wall of Flesh again. Well, Jenny, first of all, hi, Jenny. Uh, Jenny Hello, says, Jenny. It's as bad as it sounds, the Wall of Flesh. <laughs> It really is. Um, oh. Yeah, I was I was so close to defeating the damn thing, but now I don't know why. I just can't seem to respawn it again to face again. So I've got right. to try and figure that out now. If not, I'll just keep going down in the dungeon. Uh, I'll just yes. stay on medium core forever. There you go. <laughs> or create a new world and do it all over again. A whole new world. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I've built cool houses. Oh, the other thing I did do is I built up to space and built, built a space house. Ooh. I like space houses. So now I've got a, now I've got a rope from my house to my space house. Very cool. I like space houses. Oh, do you yes. stick with it, Pete? <laughs> I'll try my best. Yes. But yeah, that's mostly what I've been playing. Oh, the other game that I did pick up very briefly when I got home yesterday evening. It was quite late. Yes. Uh, it's a 2024 game, surprisingly. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I started playing Botany Manor because it's on. Oh um, yes. It's on game, game Pass. Pass. It is. It is. Uh, it's an interesting game. I it's can't like... quite figure out something, but that might have been due to exhaustion. Oh, well, maybe, because it's like Pokemon for plants, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So I just, I downloaded, I've got a couple Ooh. of things downloaded off of Game Pass, because <laughs> I was specifically looking through to try and find 2024 games, because... Yeah, I know. Christ, we're in August, and my God, we're getting close to that game of the year show, and I've I played next to nothing this year. I know. I'm getting so, a bit nervous about that. It's a big show. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's a bit worrying that I would put Suicide Squad above Final Fantasy Rebirth. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm joking. I wouldn't really, because Suicide Squad was a piece of crap. Uh, I mean, I At least I could it. actually get close to finishing Final Fantasy rather than well, Suicide Squad. I always put the caveat that I enjoyed Suicide Squad strictly because I was playing it with Max. Uh, I probably yeah. would not have enjoyed it outside of that. <laughs> uh, true. Um, true. Ah, Jenny says, we've been playing Wipeout from like 2006 or 7. <laughs> Nothing wrong with playing Wipeout from 2006 or 7. Well, so, I yeah, too how, how's your week? had an interesting week. So I pretty much only play games now on stream. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So Monday I played uh, Remnant Two, okay. which I won as a free game. It's an RPG, uh, and it's actually quite interesting. Now, unfortunately, the first hour was all narrative heavy, so it's just all the setup, all the setting up, all the characters, the world building, all that. Of course. But. It's really kind of shaping up to be a very interesting uh, RPG. Uh, okay. I think it's set in the future. And to try and go into it would be very confusing. So catch my stream over on the Kylie Wild channel on Mondays at 7. Uh, <laughs> the link is in the description. Yeah. Um, and then on Wednesday, I played the Stanley Parable. Which I very, very, very much enjoyed. I actually got a little bit choked up because the very last, because uh, it has several different endings, and the very last ending that I had time for, I got the what's called the freedom ending, which is the 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 best ending of all. And so, so you mean the Braveheart ending? <laughs> it may as well be. Um, but uh, uh, it just there was just this whole speech about happiness and life and you know how happiness is the goal and i just kind of like how a breakdown but in the best way <laughs> so i was very happy about that um and then friday holy crap in a hand basket danker was there <laughs> uh, hurricane I, friday was it i played mortuary assistant now because I play scary games on Friday. I 
Okay, so there is a scary element to this game. There are jump scares and it's 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 otherworldly, you know, type demon stuff. I thought that was going mm -hmm. to scare me, which is why I picked it. No, when you're doing mortuary assistant, you have to actually embalm dead people. That put me on edge so bad. <laughs> I had to like sew their mouth shut and like hammer things into their bones and like all kinds of. I had to remove. I had to drain their juices. Uh, that's not yeah, what they're called. No. Um. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, well, the game, the game, game is called Mortuary's Assistant, is it? I know, but I was hoping there would be less mortuary, more assistant. <laughs> but. Okay. <sighs> yes. So there's no help in some people. Wow, I had to I had to uh do what I call a unicorn chaser after that, which is I had to watch something funny or something fluffy. I had to watch some puppies. Uh and some funny stuff because I was so on edge. Not on edge for the demonic stuff. That's fine. Just there are people that do this for a living. Oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> So next week, a little preview of next week, I'm probably going to do Ribnet 2 again on Monday. And uh, a different weird game on a Wednesday. And then I'm going to go through a list of games that Danker sent over. Um, for <laughs> yes, exactly, Jenny. Uh, uh, for Friday, the scary one. Because I really want to do something that has jump scares. I've got the perfect game for you for that, then. What's that? Alien Isolation. I, I have thought about that. I, that's one of my favorite games of all times. And I thought, I could dig that back out, you know? I might do that. Either that or Outlast. Um, but anyway. So that's basically been my week. I, I am slowly coming back to the internet. Uh, <laughs> both, exactly. Um, and uh, mostly that. Yes. And then, yeah. just for fun stuff, I lost a bunch of weight. Like a bunch of weight. Like a bunch Woo. of weight. And um, I'm very excited about that. I'm very, And my trainer is very happy. Um, and he said, don't ruin it by drinking a bunch of wine at the weekend. <laughs> Which, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's true, too, Nana. Bendy and the Ink Machine is a good one uh, for Fridays, I think. So, yes, I love yeah, Bendy yeah. and the Ink Machine. I really that do. That would be a cool one to do. If yeah. I stumble across any good uh, spooky games, I'll let yeah. you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But anyway, so that's our week summed up uh, as I pour more wine. Again, come watch us at twitch.tv forward slash rapid reviews. Uh, yes. Where you can join in the fun. Join in the conversation. Uh, yeah. Can but, you read the chat for a second? I'm just dealing with just doing something. Okay. Well, chat is mostly applauding for us and saying ha ha, which is great. I love it. Thank you so much, chat. Um, <laughs> um, also, Ginny, random question. Did you happen to get a Twitch notification? Because Apparently, only our U.S.-based people got Twitch notifications, and they got double Twitch notifications. I know this is great for our podcast listeners. This is so thrilling and interesting for you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, see. I was just popping something in the chat. No, but, oh, okay, okay. Well, that, that's fine, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, nope. Oh, okay, fair enough. Cool. I got you there, that makes sense. Yeah, um, right, well, I'm ready now, so let's... Should we, should we yes, do? Pete, I'm going to turn it over to you for this week's stories and news. Stories and news, same thing. Yeah, I know. You weren't supposed to do right. that. <laughs> no. All right, well, hmm. Where do we start? With the crap crap stories? The okay. even crapper stories? Or the bigger crapper stories? Um, We'll go in, in descending order of crap. <laughs> okay, cool. So we'll start off with the, the least crap stories. Yes. Cool. All right. Because um, do you happen to have not that I'm expecting that anyone really does at the moment a launch model Xbox One? A launch model Xbox. I think so. I think that's the one I have. 
Okay. Um, would you would you have happened to have turned it on recently? No, I haven't even turned on my regular Xbox recently. <laughs> oh, I've noticed. I've yeah. generally noticed that anyway. So yeah, there's a reason why I ask. Okay. Because um, they might essentially become paperweights now. Right, okay. Are they okay? Good. Yeah, so let me read the story. It's coming from VGC. Uh, I won't read the headline, I'll just go straight into the story. Okay. Uh, certain launch model Xbox One consoles are failing to download firmware updates. Oh. So, ah. according to Digital Foundry, the, 2000, the 2013 launch models of the console, the larger VCR like console seen, seen in the image above in the article, uh, as opposed to the Xbox One S revision in 2016, can't download the latest firmware if they haven't been updated in a while. Uh -huh. So the report stems from a number of claims on games forum uh, NeoGAF that players were struggling to download updates for older uh, Xbox One consoles. So, wow. yeah, it's not a particularly good thing because no. uh, one of the requirements that was set up for the Xbone when it was first launched was the always online requirement, which now basically takes this online and essentially bricks it. Ooh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, so after further investigation, the Digital Foundry team found that the Xbox One console containing outdated, outdated firmware may no longer be able to update. The team attempted to update three Xbox One consoles, two running a dashboard from 2017 and one running from 2018. All three failed to update the latest firmware, not only by trying to download the update, but also by saving the update to a USB stick. Right. So Xbox, One, uh, Xbox consoles can't function online unless they're running the latest firmware, which means these consoles that can't access Xbox Live also can't run any digital purchases that need an online check. Hooray for DRM. Yeah. So yeah, That's I won't go any fun. further with this, but yeah, this is essentially making them very large and very annoying paperweights. So you might as well take that Xbox One console and prop it with prop the door open with it because that that shit ain't moving. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry, I killed Kylie by talking about paperweights. I know, apparently. Uh, I have... Uh, mine has not been plugged in probably since I got the... Whatever. Xbox X, S. S, whatever. Yeah. Series S. That. Yeah, so <laughs> don't, don't bother because you won't be able to do anything with it anyway. Right. And probably it will take off like a jet engine anyway. Yes, probably. So, yeah, don't bother. There's no point. Don't even bother trying to sell it because, yeah, nobody will be able to, or willing to want to buy it anyway. So, uh, unfortunately, it's another console that's going to go in the trash heap of history. Right. So, yeah, fun times. Yeah. Fun times. The, the news can only get worse for Xbox, right? Of course. Can it or can't it? No, it can always yes, get it can. worse. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it can. Because do you remember the June Showcase? Yes. Do you remember one of the games that actually had a release date on the June Showcase? I don't, actually. Uh, there was there were several games that actually had a 2024 release date attached to it. Right. I say several, it was only a handful, because there weren't many, because most were confirmed for 2025 and beyond, which is what we said on the Showcase at the time. Yes. Now, one of the games that did actually have a release date for 2024 was Avowed. Yes, that's true. And, yes. And I say did. Right, okay. Because Avowed has now been delayed until early 2025. Oh, goodness. I'm not surprised. Let's be honest. So, let's let's go. So, Microsoft has announced the Xbox it? console exclusive of Avowed. Yes, it is. Uh, has been delayed until early next year. Although an official release date had, had yet to be confirmed, Xbox had planned a 2024 release with a blog post by developer Obsidian seemingly accidentally confirming November 12th as the release date before it was removed. However, a message posted on the Xbox account on, on Twitter, I refuse to call it X for Christ's sakes, um, has confirmed that the game will now release on February 18th, 2025. 
<sighs> Shall we find out the reasons why this is being delayed? Sure. So a company with an image. What the hell? That's um. The article has been formatted incorrectly because it says a company with an imagine. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh. Showing the upcoming first party Xbox games. The message reads, so many games coming. As such, we're moving about to February 18th, 2025 to give play- players backlogs some yeah. breathing room. Sorry, does Microsoft actually have anything for this slated? Oh, wait. Yes, they do. Let's go on and talk about this because the news means that only... Um, uh, the news means that the only remaining Xbox uh, console exclusive games planned for the end of 2024 are Age of Mythology Retold, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, Towerborn, and Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Watch Ooh, that one yeah. be delayed. So they have four games. Right. And I would say that only one of those, two of those, sorry, are actually ones that people really want to play. Yes. Indeed. Indiana Jones and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yep. And let's be honest, most of them probably not going to play Flight Simulator anyway. So no. your only big one, really, that's going to catch the attention of, let's call them the normie crowd, is Indiana <laughs> Jones. Yes. I want to play Indiana Jones. Yeah, so do I. But, yeah, anyway. um, Let's not go into the rest of that because, well, it's just talking about Avowed, and nobody cares. So, what do you think about this delay? Bad? Good? <sighs> Who cares? I I think we're at. I can't believe I'm going to say this about an Obsidian game, but I think we're at. Uh, who cares? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Avowed had heat behind it probably last year, but they've not been able to generate any more. I know, in fact, a lot of people aren't anticipating this game. They're not looking forward to it. Which, again, let me state, is crazy because it's Obsidian, and Obsidian does so well. But uh, I think it's too many delays. Nobody really is on the bandwagon for this. Um, And, I mean, I'll play it when it comes out because it'll be on Game Pass. But that's the extent, if that makes sense. Yep, because that's all I was going to do anyway, but I actually don't genuinely give a crap about it. Yeah. It looks interesting, but obviously action RPG is probably not really my kind of thing. Yeah. Usually. Um, Yeah, normally they're definitely not your thing. Uh, I only, again, like it because Obsidian did New Vegas. New Vegas is one of my top three games of all time. So I'm hoping it can kind of recapture that magic. But, you know, that that's it. Does that make sense? That Like, that's that's the only mm-hmm. interest I have in it. Yeah, the only interest you had was because of the name alone, and that's exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Like, the name of the studio. So, yeah, it's kind of... Look, any Obsidian fans out there are probably obviously going to be pretty disappointed with this. But, I don't know. But I think, from what I'd heard, what I'd seen about it, I think most people would just... Pretty much not really had much hope for this and not really had much uh, interest in it anyway. Right, exactly. I think they need to show more of the game to actually garner interest, but, well, I think what they have shown has been underwhelming so far as well. So Yeah, exactly. well, that's exactly it. Like, the last thing we saw, um, which was a little teaser, which I think was the beginning of this year, it was very dated. It looked dated. Mm. It looked last gen. And if they're now delaying this until next year, I don't think it's going to be suddenly, you know, next gen looking, if that makes sense. No, because probably most of the the art assets are already done. Most yeah. of the game itself is done. It will just be major hot fixing and bug fixes, right. QR, QA testing, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I'm just... Not very excited about it, let's say. But we'll, I, you yeah. know, it's another one of those Game Pass games. It'll be, we'll just pick it up, play yeah. it, maybe one and done after an hour. Exactly. Who, who knows? Yeah. So we will see. Uh, so let's get on to some more kind of crappy news. Okay. Uh, because 
uh, I'm very conflicted about this particular story anyway. Okay. So let's just get into it, shall we? Uh, this happened a fair while ago. Obviously, we haven't recorded for a little bit, so yeah. I must preface that. Uh, video game workers who are members of the SAG-AFTRA uh, labor union for American actors have called for strike action. Ooh, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, the so the strike was called after the union failed to negotiate executive protections against the use of AI for its members. Oh, right. God, this has been raging on for absolutely ages anyway. Right. So last September, SAG-AFTRA uh, members approved strike action. Uh, if the union was unable to agree terms it considered acceptable while negotiating the interactive media agreement, SAG after have been in um, negotiations with vid various video game companies and their performance production arms since October of 2022, including Activision Blizzard, um, Blind Light, Disney Character Voices, EA Productions, Formosa, Insomniac, Epic, Take Two, Voiceworks, and WB Games. Um, those companies now now likely won't be able to hire unionized actors to prefer, uh, perform motion capture or voice work for their games. So some uh, some of the companies listed uh, offer listed offer performance services um, for several game developers and publishers. Blind Light had contributed performance work to series such as Elder Scrolls, Halo, Destiny, and Fallout. Formosa had uh, worked on Call of Duty as well as Death Stranding and God of War. Wow. Uh, we'll read some of the some of the statements from um, SAG AFTRA, shall we? Okay. <laughs> so, although agreements have been reached on many issues uh, important to SAG AFTRA members, the uh, employers refused to plainly affirm in clear and enforceable language that they will protect all performers covered by their contracts. Um, by the contract in the AI language. So, right. Like hmm. I said, I feel very conflicted about this to some degree, but we'll read a few more statements that have come out from a few of the people associated with SAG after as well. Uh -huh. So uh, President Fran Drescher um, added, uh, we're not going to consent to a contract that allows companies to abuse AI to the detriment of our members. Enough is enough. Right. Oh, God, when you hear enough is enough, it's like, oh, I sort of get, anyway. Uh, when these companies get serious about offering an agreement uh, our members can live and work with, we will be here ready to negotiate. Uh, Chief Negotiator uh, Duncan Crabtree Island. What a name. What a name. That's amazing. <laughs> so the video game industry generates billions of dollars in profit annually. Press X to doubt. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> it does, but well. Uh, the driving force behind uh, that success is the creative people who design and create those games. That includes the SAG AFRA members who, who bring memorable and beloved game characters to life, and they deserve and demand the same fundamental predictions of performance in film, TV, streaming, and music. Fair compensation and their right to be informed, right of informed consent for AI uses of their faces, voices, and bodies. Frankly, it's stunning that these video game studios haven't learned anything from the lessons of last year, that our members can and will stand up and demand fair and equitable treatment with respect to AI and public aspects of it. Okay. Um, Nana says, uh, SAG-AFRA as a union for VAs sucks. Uh, and signing a contract for AI for vo voice work. While this strike is about them not using IA, IA, AI, that is shady AF. Um, this is where I feel conflicted about this because I feel okay. like AI is not the absolute devil incarnate that everyone thinks that it is. Because Ooh. it is a... No. Okay. Hear me out. Okay. Because I'll actually... Because AI is not necessarily bad because it is, an, it is a tool to be able to assist with people. It's not the only thing that can and will be used. When people solely use AI, that's where it's a problem. But it can help reduce cost. It can help reduce, you know, it can help uh -huh. with the workforce that is the creative force behind it. Right. Obviously, what the companies are talking about is using the voice and the voice and facial captures 
for future projects, which, yeah, I don't agree with that. If they don't want to be involved in a project, they have every right to do, to refuse their right to work in that respect. Mm -hmm. But the use of AI can be can be utilized for a greater good to some degree, but obviously not when you're overly reliant on it. Right. Well, Nana says, well, the type type of AI they are using is the problem, to be fair. Uh, I will say this. Um, there are like shorts or whatever videos over on YouTube, because that's all I do. <laughs> Just watch YouTube videos. That's my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are clearly it's it's clearly AI, but they are done to sound like uh, Anthony Hopkins or uh, uh, the philosopher Alan Watts or um, oh I forgot his name. Uh, but like yeah, I know which ones you mean. They yeah. sound so bad. Yeah, and it's like, but I, I there's oh crap, I just messed something up. Okay, um, <laughs> but it's like um, when you start using AI to copy voices, celebrity voices. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a step too far. Um, yeah. If you're using AI because you're, uh, you can't really afford, you know, big money or whatever, I, I can see it as a tool, but it's, yeah, it's and that's all to. it should be. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do think that there should be, I, I think we're in a new era and I think there needs to be rules put in place um, for this, whole new era new technology and all that stuff you know mm -hmm. that's how i feel um yeah exactly jenny just hit the the nail on the head exactly what i was trying to say uh yeah without their permission it's scary yeah i meant to say without their permission so they yeah. got like sir anthony hopkins you know narrating this intro or whatever but it's mm -hmm. not him it's an ai you know version yeah of but this voice. is this is why I said it should be the right to refusal to be able to work if uh -huh. they don't consent to their voice and their 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 likeness being used in a in a project. Then yes, right. they have every right to refuse that. Right. If a company is writing into their contract that any future projects they don't have to necessarily be involved in, but will use an AI template, uh -huh. then that's wrong. Right. But obviously, when it comes to um comes to development and art artwork. It can be an assisted tool, let's yeah. say, and it will help cut. It will help cut these dwindling, these ballooning development budgets that we've been having for the last several years, which is causing a knock-on effect for yes. everything. Let's say it is. So that's what I said: is that some companies do need to progress somewhat further, which is why I feel very conflicted about this entire thing, and also based on the fact that. SAG Afra were involved in the Hollywood strike last year, and Jesus Christ, they did a crappy job. They didn't want AI to be used in any of the any of the film or TV projects, mm -hmm. but and they went on strike for several months. And yet, yes. what was agreed in that? The use of AI. So they clearly did not get anything that they actually wanted. Yeah. And they just kept people off work for several months. Hardworking well, actors that. Not the not the multi millionaires, yeah. Because let's well, be honest, most of the multi millionaire actors that were getting jobs were gonna were gonna survive it. You know, especially in the video games industry, Nolan North and Troy Baker are not exactly gonna be hard up for work, are they? Right. But everyone else is gonna be in a bit of a problem situation. And most of those VAs and motion capture artists may not survive this because actually work is dwindling and they don't they won't sit around and wait. You know, and we have to remember as well as this doesn't, this only affects Hollywood. This only affects the American one. So any, yeah. any development that's outside of America can carry on working. So London, yeah. UK, Japan, unaffected so long as they're not a part of SAG after a union. Yeah. So, I don't know. New, See what I mean? World. Conflicted as hell. Yeah. Well, it's a new era. We'll have to make our way through it new rules new reality <laughs> mm. so nana says i expect um japan games to not have dubs for a bit i might have to disagree with that one because they might just go and find a voice actor that's not unionized instead Ooh. yeah that did happen so if they're not part of sag afro or they're or they're um or they're part of the uk they might still be able to go and work and they technically speak the Queen's English or King's English, whatever you want to call it these days. Yeah. So 
we'll wait and see on it. Obviously, there are going to be developments because I actually haven't seen anything more from the strike since this came out a few about a week or so ago. Yeah. Jenny so. says, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what will happen. Exactly my thoughts. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so... Anyway, more... Next item. Awful news. <laughs> more awful news. Great. Yeah. So, Woo! when you think of video game publications, what are some of the biggest affirmation... Like, some of the biggest names that you think when it comes to print media? Wait. When you say print media, what do you mean? What? what? Uh, video games, magazines, oh, and, and stuff um, like that. Over uh, the years. Ep epic? No, I mean like actual like magazines, publications, not mean. publishers. Or not pu No, epic? no. The big, what is it called? The big pretty one. I thought it was called Epic. It's been a long time since I bought print media, Pete. I know, but they it's have a big digital pretty print. one. But that's the only one I can think of. And Wired. <laughs> okay, Wired. Wired yeah. magazine is fine. Um, so for me, it's stuff like official Xbox magazine, you know, all you know, Nintendo mag stuff like that. Yeah. Um. You know. Game Informer. Well. That's true. That is correct. There. Well. I'm glad you mentioned them, because Game Informer magazine is closing after 33 years in publication. Wow! I'm older than that. <laughs> Me too. Uh, no, no, I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, the, long run U the long running US publication will close its doors following three decades. Uh, in a oh letter my. that was posted to, uh, to Twitter, and nearly said X, for Christ's sake. Uh-huh. Um, uh, read, after 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insights from the ever-evolving world of video games, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the closure of Game Informer. Oh. Uh, from the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive uh, virtual realms, we have been honoured to share this incredible journey with you, our loyal readers. While our presses may stop, the passion for gaming that we've cultivated together will continue to live on. Thank you for being a part of our epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. Now, that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks, because Game Informer was obviously a well, very key pillar of the, yeah. the print media. Absolutely. So, um... So carry on with the article. It says veterans of, video of Game Informer included Andy McNamara, uh, the publication's former editor who now works at EA, uh, Dan Reichel, who's now of Giant Bomb, and Ben Hansen, who's now of MinMax. <laughs> Jenny says, why aren't um, there loads of gaming magazines? There used to be. Uh, so Game Informer was known for its unprecedented access, ruling dozens of games uh, during its history. Um, Game Informer's parent company, Dun, 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 GameStop. Oh, yes. Uh, laid off several staff from its magazine in operation in 2022. So, for the majority of its run, Game Informer was only available via GameStop back subscription. In 2024, it offered readers the chance to subscribe to the magazine outside of GameStop memberships. So, yeah, screw GameStop because they suck. I and, remember. Uh, go on. I remember going to GameStop and buying games, and then they would register you for Game Informer magazine. It was like yeah. an automatic thing. Yeah, because they clearly needed subscriptions. Yeah. Which is fine because Game Informer clearly did a lot of lot of work within the video game realm to actually help with, you know, print media. So I want to come back to this comment that says, uh, why aren't there loads of gaming magazines, which Jenny said. Yes. There are. There are quite a few coming up nowadays. They're mostly all indie publications. Such as Debug magazine. Oh yes, Debug. We've such had as them Lost here. in Cult. We've had them here. That's true. And there are there are several others like um, Ninty Media. Probably time we should have those guys back. We probably should. So we'll get in contact with them yes. at some point. But yes, uh, if you are interested in print publication, there are several indie game, oh, indie focused. Yeah, publications. It, is, it is more indie focused. But I mean, there was just that era of 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 just you could walk into any. Heck, you could walk into a grocery store and there would be just a, a whole row, you know, two, three rows of just gaming magazines. 
Um, which is sad because we're, we're never going back to that. You know, that's a whole different, that's a different time, you know, but it's sad because I used to love doing that. Just, just getting a stack of like game magazines and taking them home. Oh but, yeah. I used to do that every time I would go on holiday. I would always go and <laughs> grab like a few magazines to read on the plane. Exactly. Whilst I'm out there. So like, which is why like OXM, Nintendo mm -hmm. and stuff like that was always on the agenda for me. Yes. In fact, I had a regular sort of subscription for official Nintendo magazine before it shut down as well. Oh wow. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> So, yes. A uh, big shame, yeah, because print media seems to be, unfortunately, not doing too well. But that's understandable in the digital landscape that we have. But I, I think I the problem started... is that we, mm -hmm. there are some that need to evolve. And I think that's what the indie publications seem to be doing a lot more now, is that they, they understand do. that not everyone will want to have this big paper husk in their house. <laughs> so they'd much rather send out a digital subscription, which... It works. It does. Um, Jenny says, yeah, I can't remember seeing many or any at the store recently. Yes, exactly. But plenty of cookery and fashion, etc. And home magazines, too. Um, yeah, it's crazy because uh, longtime listeners of this show know I started out in print media. My whole adult career, like I went, my whole university education is journalism. And I went straight to work for newspapers. And it's weird to watch how the progression from print media to digital, because I got right on the, the, just right on the edge when everything started to become digital. Um, and so for me, there's this kind of like sense of loss because I'm not saying that digital productions are are less in any way they're not but there was such <laughs> there was such hard work that went into physical print media um and, mm -hmm. and that's the thing uh, the the guys at debug they'll tell you that um the well, guys they did at lost tell us that on the yeah, episode yeah, yeah. that we we when we had them on exactly they will they will all tell you the same thing there's a lot of work that goes into print media and it's sad because as we continue to go on as, as we evolve and we, we become more of a, a digital-based society, those sort of – those sorts of jobs – like, I, I started out as a typesetter. Typesetter is not even a job title anymore <laughs> because there's no – typesetter? A typesetter was someone who – it was originally uh, someone who would set the, the, uh, the tiny little type for the print machine. So there's little wooden blocks. Oh, but right. Okay. By the time that I got hired, typesetter was the person that inputted, uh, the, the text for, uh, you know, newspapers, newsprint magazines. Um, they just do print. Oh, is that what they now call a copywriter? Copy evolved into a copywriter. Yes. Um, and so that's just this, all this like technology, it's ancient technology, but it's all just gone, you know? Like, 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 is anyone going <laughs> to silly, but does anyone even know now that uh, type like type used to have to be set <laughs> like each little individual letter had to be set and then you had to, you know, roll ink on it and then print your pages well, before like, it went through the press. Exactly. And all of that's lost now. Um, yeah. Uh, Jenny says, I guess we get really fast gamer news online now. Yeah, we get it as soon as it goes up now. It's it's ridiculous. Well, I and... just think that's a big, big problem with society as a whole now. Like you get a lot of different publications or a lot of different oh. outlets that are all straight, all working on the, the idea of being first and fastest. Yes, exactly. Uh, Not always accurate. No, that we've sacrificed accuracy for sure. Uh, Jenny says, yeah, I flick through digital magazines a lot faster than physical magazines. I definitely don't appreciate the work that goes into digital media. Yeah. It's, it's very, very different because I like I said I was in that transition area uh or uh, transition time where we went mm. from paper media to print media and I could lay out a magazine in a day whereas we were laying out magazine it took a week well it took a full month if I'm honest but the actual layout the physical layout of of the the magazine took a full week 7 days uh and then by the time I left the industry it took me a day 
<laughs> so <laughs> it's like there just wasn't – not to say that that wasn't hard work. It was. It's just – it's like a lost art almost. And so I love the fact that there are this resurgence of these indie magazines because, I mean, I have a slight bias to that, you know, that, that – I know where that 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 is. You know the hard work that goes into that. Of course, yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. It's not exactly hard to stick a couple of pieces of paper in a scanner, stick I... it into your computer, and send it out via a, via a push notification I onto mean... a subscription service. It's not hard these days. It's very like I being that I've I've worked both sides of the fence. We'll say uh, mm. digital was so much easier. So oh, much of course easier. it is. But I actually still very much appreciate having a an actual subscription because um doing some work for starburst magazine over the years i actually i still get a, like a paper copy of the subscriber magazine every I, month and i still love reading through it it's just nice to have it i will say that my biggest thing i can bring up my biggest example is comic books i've been reading comic books since i was 12 years old mm -hmm. And having a paper comic book, because they went, they were like a, a four color process. And then in the late nineties, early two thousands, they moved to a digital color process. And then of course, after that, they moved to just digital media mm -hmm. to hold a comic book from, you know, the, the sixties, seventies, eighties, early nineties. There's so much. Like, I'll, I'll prove this point in a minute. Hang on. Okay. There's so much, you can feel the hard work that's in it. You can, uh, it, it, there's just something very satisfying about it. And, and smelling the, 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 the pages, they're like vanilla based pages and stuff. Um, there's something so tangible, literally tangible about touching it and reading it. But I don't have the room for comic books like I used to. I, I do have the room, but I want to do other things. Um, so instead of having the, the, the tons of boxes, I had just tons and tons and tons. I now have, you know, my iPad, you know, I have like the entire X-Men, uncanny X-Men library and X-Men on my iPad at the touch of a finger. That's pretty mm. cool, but it does not feel the same. It does not feel the same to me at all. Um, I'm going to read what Jenny said. Um, Vanilla, vanilla based, based pages. pages. Yeah, if you smell old comic book pages, they smell like vanilla. It's weird. I don't you know. You mean if one they like that one like that? Wait, I gotta see. <gasps> yes, Pete. Oh, look at that. Uh, I believe eighty one. I, I, I can't. Uh, no, I believe that's the early um, early to mid seventies. Ooh. Uh, it's actually the first. It's the first appearance of Shumagorath. That's amazing. That is amazing. I mean, considering Shumagorath is my favorite strange character or strange oh, villain, I had to buy it. That's very cool. That's very I've cool. I've been looking for the next issue since then, just so I can have the run on there. Oh. But it's hard to find. Even I, that was quite difficult to find. I am. I just have such a weakness for comic books. I do. I. They're just. You can just feel. I, I know I sound like a silly hippie but <laughs> you can just feel all the like love and 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 hard work that's in the paper-based ones yeah um, and all the lsd that was taken <laughs> to create that cover <laughs> i like what, what jenny says though oh our friend gave us loads of beanos but they smell like cat because this cat slept on top of them for 10 years <laughs> amazing <laughs> that's amazing i mean there's nothing wrong with that i, no, I see no issues all. in that i see no issues oh um, Oh, that's so funny. I love well, it. actually, I see many issues, but you know, they're, <laughs> yes. they're issues of comics. Hey. Say. <laughs> oh, that that's awful. so funny. Uh, I I recently discovered Bino. I discovered that uh, Dennis oh, Bino and Dandy. And um, oh, Dad, I'm I've just blanked out now. Oh my gosh. Uh, <sighs> Pete would have a cow if I told you what I've just bought. They're big like this. They got like Judge Dredd in them. That one. Oh, 2008. That 2080. Yeah. I discovered those recently. Uh, those are amazing. We didn't have those in America. Like oh, the 2008 stuff is 
hit or miss, but some of it is really good. I I just bought. They were giving them away for like ten p. I just bought yeah a because whole there was such abundance over here. So I it. love it. Yeah, they they are really cool, and they're a unique piece of comic history. Yes, for sure, for sure. How did we get sidetracked on comics? Tangent time. <laughs> uh, because we were talking about print media. Yes. Uh, so, yes. yes. But yeah, I thought for the purpose of that conversation, I'd go and fish out one of my older comic books. Absolutely. I just love comic books. I do. I do. Oh, yes. Asterix. Yes. So, okay. Here's a funny thing. Just tangent time. Um, so, I love um, back in the like late 80s, early 90s, we had the Disney Channel. But only rich people could get the Disney Channel back in America. But sometimes Disney Channel would have these free weekends. And so all of us poor kids could go and watch the Disney Channel. And then they had uh, Asterix and – was it Asterix and Obelix? Is that – that's the right name, uh, right? Yes. And I was so – I was like, there's two cartoons, Asterix and Obelix and then Unico, which was my first anime I ever saw. Um, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. WTF, this is so cool. And then a million years later, I move over here to the UK and I find out it's a comic book and and they got a theme park like in France or something. Yes. So now I have to go to that. I'm an old lady and I have to go to that. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it so much. Also Unico, oh. which I think is a Miyazaki. Believe it or not, I think he worked on that. He might have done. Anyway. But yes. So Ta-da! let's get on to the worst the worst news from the week. Okay, Pete, tell us the worst news. <laughs> uh, oh, Rabbit Reviews trip with chat to the theme park. Yes! Oh my gosh, I... Ginny, you and I, we should do that. We should go to that. Um, I'm going to say park. no, only because it should be to Super Nintendo World. <laughs> I also want to do that. That was a plan of mine. Yeah, but we'll we'll start small by going to mm-hmm. that one. Yes. <laughs> who's pa- who's paying? Well, I guess it'll be me. <laughs> well, I'm paying my fair share. I'll, I'll pay my spending money. Thanks. There you go. This is going to be a pretty <laughs> expensive trip. Anyway. Uh... Um. Oh, I. Oh yeah, I'll talk to you about that after the stream. Anyway. Okay. Uh, right, so yeah, the, ter- the the biggest terrible news from the week. Okay. Because we are now hit once again for the umpteenth time this year. Okay. With more layoffs. Oh, dear. Have a guess who it is this time. I have not been reading news. I'm going to say EA. No. I just pulled that out of my ears. Unfortunately not. Because the uh, the casualties of this one, and I say unfortunately, I'm trying to be very uh, respectful about this. It is Bungo. Or Bungie. Oh no! Oh no! So Bungie have announced that it will lay off 220 staff members, roughly <gasps> 17% of the studio. Oh! So, in a letter published on Wednesday, so this was published on the 31st of July, so at the beginning of the week, um, Destiny Creator cited rising costs of development and industry shifts for what some, uh, for what it calls some of the most difficult changes the studios had to make. Yeah. Uh, in the letter, the company announced two major changes to the structure of the developer going forward. Uh, so, quote, firstly, we are deepening our integration with Sony Interactive Entertainment, working to integrate 155 of our roles, roughly 12% into SIE over the next oh, few quarters. No. So, CEO Pete Parsons wrote. Um, uh, SI, quote, SIE works tirelessly with us to identify roles for as many of our people as possible enabling us together to save a great deal of talent that would otherwise have been affected by the reduction in force. So the letter also announced that the studio is working on a new sci-fi action game within PlayStation Studios. 
I mean, great time to talk about your new game when you played off. I Tony know. Stuff. Oh dear. Um, oh dear. So, um, so quote second, we are working with PlayStation <laughs> Studios leadership to spin out one of our incubated incubation projects, an action game set uh, in a brand new science fantasy universe. Uh, to form a new studio oh, within no. PlayStation, PlayStation Studios, continue its promise, uh, promising development. Um, so yeah, this is just talking about how PlayStation or Sony had purchased Bungie in 2022, and yet this is now the second round of layoffs they've had since. Yeah. So, quote, for everyone affected by this job reduction, we're offering a generous exit package, including severance, bonus, and health coverage. Uh, they... The letter concluded by reassuring fans that his planned marathon reboot is still in development and that over 800 developers are still working on it and the Destiny franchise. Oh dear. But there is more to. So we can talk about this, but there is another article that I do need to talk about in terms of this particular story. But this is now becoming an incredibly and disgracefully worrying and horrifying trend for the video games industry. Which is why I said I'm conflicted about the AI story earlier. Right, okay. Because, let's be honest, costs to develop video games have ballooned exponentially, but sales have not increased. Right, now that is true. That is true. Uh, I think you were probably right to call it a few, a while ago. I think we're, I do think we're heading towards a crash soon enough. Yes. Very soon. I still stand by that. Uh, I think a crash is going to have to happen. But I think that that's a good thing, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy. But once it crashes, it can only go up. As I've said thousands of times, it will be better quality games, you know, more affordable, it, 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 it'll it be a good thing in the end. The problem is, is we've made this constant push for technological advancement. Right. But actually, technological advancement can only take us so far when, for the last couple of generations, we haven't really seen that massive leap in graphical no, prowess, we let's say. No, we haven't. It's very The last true. game that came out that actually looked almost realistic was Hellblade 2. And the game's kind of crap anyway. It's not great. It's not great. It's not Just great. Freaking blown over walking simulator I know. with a little bit of ambience. That's about it. Like great. the game. But this is the problem. It's all style over substance when it comes to it. And actually, for an interactive medium, you don't want. You want substance as well as your style. Right. Like your game can. I, I'm afraid to say this. I'm not afraid. I will say it anyway. Your game can look like complete crap, but if it plays well, then people are going to care. That right there. Yeah. Oh, Nana says he has more context for the story. Sure, Nana. Um, go for it. Yeah, go for it, because there might be another article that I'll be reading as a result of some of this, because there's been more stuff coming out as a result. Okay. But, um, yeah, there's uh, some of the worst looking games in the world. You know, yeah. I say worst. Some right. of those games that don't exactly look next to realistic are some of the most enjoyable experiences i've ever had a lot of the indie games now you know that don't always look superb they are good they are just interesting and really and just they have an interesting concept they have an interesting um um uh, what's it an interesting arc or an interesting sort of hook to get you in in terms of gameplay right you know, Undertale, you know, yeah, exactly. doesn't look like much, but the interesting hook is its story, its narrative design, yes. and it's the way that it plays. It's unique. Yes, that's true. You know, it, it plays off the fact that there is several games that it obviously pays homage to, Earthbound being the, probably the biggest one there. Right. But it just does it in such a way that it's enjoyable. Right. You know, Warframe, obviously, is another game where... It may not have looked like much when it started. It's evolved over time and has gotten better and had more complex stuff happening ever since then. And the biggest example was one that came up last week when I was recording this other podcast was No Man's Sky. Oh, 
cool. That started out in a terrible state. It did. It was terrible. But has been going ever mm-hmm. since with free updates and has now become one of those games that people talk about on a regular basis because it is ever expanding and ever evolving despite the fact that Sony essentially threw Hello Games under the bus from the very beginning. Who did? Who did? So you can last it out if you actually have passion and care involved with it. But the fact is that a lot of the AAA developers, especially those that are owned by first-party studios, are so wanting to just make a quick buck or make a quick dime and then move on to the next project. Well, I don't actually want to spend time anymore to create a work of art. No, that is very true. Uh, I do like that Brent said I didn't have to mention Warframe. Yes, that's true. We mentioned it. No, um, I, I mentioned it because it's a game that has evolved over 10 and years ha- and, and has a very loyal community of players. It does. Uh, Anana says, okay, so Sony basically said to Bungie, if you don't meet review goals, we will replace the manage it with so- Sony execs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and... that was actually in the last la- round of layoffs that apparently a lot of the stuff that was discussed in the background was that if they didn't meet sales expectations or dwindling budget costs with their next expansion, that Whoa. they might actually be having a real problem. He says, so they basically laid people off because of that. And one of the CEOs apparently bought 24 vehicles with the leftover yeah. money? Uh, roughly around two million dollars worth of uh, expenditure was was had on his vehicle collection. Now I have said this. I said this last time, I believe. I am a CEO. That is my title. It's not. Uh, Pete big... Parsons is sorry. Pete Parsons is the CEO of Bungie at the moment. Right. So yeah, it was the, them because it came up in Nana's comment. Oh okay. Um. So. Right, okay. I was just seeing it, yeah. Yeah, um, Anyway, my official title is CEO. I have a tiny company, so it's it's okay. kind of cool, but it's also, you know, it's a small company. I am getting a pretty good bonus in January because my company has done really well. I cannot imagine <laughs> taking my actual company's profits because... My company has made money, and my bonus is separate from that. I mm. cannot imagine taking my company's profits and going and buying something like a car, or you know something su- super flur- have you superfluous? How do you say that word? Superfluous. Uh, that that word. I cannot imagine that. Like in a million years, I can't imagine that. I don't. I, I said this last time. I do not understand the, the the mind, the mental place that these people are in. That they do this, like everything I do is for my company. It's to make my company better. So going and buying, you know, twenty four. Yeah, twenty four vehicles. Why? Why? I don't understand. But this is why I make money every year, because I don't understand that mentality. I don't have to lay people off. I've had the same employee for four years. I've not ever had to lay them off, not once. Mm-hmm. So. so. Right, shall we get to the next part of this story? Because yeah. this came out a few uh, a day later. Yes. And then I will go on to the, ne- the next okay. part of the story as well. Do that. Because we might have touched on some of it already anyway. So Bungie's recent swath of job cuts were going to happen regardless of the success of Final Shape. Oh, definitely, yeah. So it's been claimed. So uh, on Bungie, yeah, we'll go over that. So uh, I won't talk about that because obviously it's talking about um, the previous story. So uh, Game Game Phil Newsletter, so uh, the person who runs that, Stephen Totillo, uh, cited three separate sources who each claimed that uh, these cuts were already planned by early 2024, long before the Final Shape was released in June. Remember that obviously Final Shape was uh, delayed, though. Yes. So, according to Tatillo's sources, Bungie has repeatedly missed Sony's financial targets, which is what Nana was mentioning in the comments. Yes. Uh, and has been losing money since the release of Lightfall expansion of Destiny in early 2023. 
Although it was stated that Bungie had full autonomy when it was acquired by Sony in 2022, sources told Totillo that Bungie's management agreed last year that it would have to make deep cuts to prove to Sony that it was serious about managing its finances. Uh, this led to Bungie laying off around 100 staff in October of 2023, ah! uh, a, uh, a move that it's claimed wasn't enough to remedy the situation. Right. So Totillo's sources um, say that another round of cuts those made this week was planned in early 2024 and couldn't have been avoided even if the final shape had been an enormous hit. Oh, One source has told Tortillo, I think Sony overpaid for Bungie. I think Bungie sold things that they were not able to deliver. Oh, goodness. Which then led on to, well, this came a little bit before, but this has also led on to a lot of backlash, let's say. Right. Because former Bungie employees... Of course, for Bungie CEO Pete Parsons to step down following uh, the announcement, they will eliminate sort of 120 rounds. I, I'm going to agree with that. I have to. Uh, yep. Yeah, so, shall we read some of the stuff that's come out? Um, yeah. Uh, from that. in the, that's on the article because it's coming out via social media. Yes. Any guess which, which social media platform? It is Twitter. Of course, of course it, it is. is. So, um, community manager Liana Rupert. Uh, alleged on Twitter, you are a liar, a thief, and so many things we can't discuss publicly. Oh my Step goodness. down and without the giant Sony payout. This isn't on Sony. This is squarely, uh, squarely on the failure of leadership, plain and simple. Uh, Griffin Bennett, the former community manager for Destiny, added, Pete is a joke. No, not me. What? That Pete. <laughs> I mean, he might be... Look, he might be true, or they might be true. Uh huh. But I'm not taking sole blame for these loss of jobs. Yes. Um, uh, C suite taking accountability for any of the, for any of this, or still just withholding bonuses, and it will be settled in house. He wrote in another post. Um, poor leadership has crushed one of the greatest developers of all time. Retire. Oh my Ooh, goodness! Pretty scathing. Yeah. Um, Sam Bartley, uh, who was another community manager and community coordinator, wrote, Howard, you did this. You chose this. I'm already listed as do not work with and I don't care anymore. You lied to my face. Straight to it. You also invited me to come to see your new cars two days before you laid me off. Uh, apologies gosh. for this language. I'm reading verbatim. Two fucking days. Leave now. Oh my literal goodness. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it for now. Holy crap. Hmm. So it turns out that Bungie are not exactly the best company to work for. And I think we've known it for quite a while. Yeah. Holy crap. Hmm. Holy crap. That can is ask, insane. Can, yes, Jenny says can, that's can awful. Can I ask a leading... Yes. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Karen. I was just saying, Jenny says that's awful. I absolutely agree. Uh, Nana says, yeah, that's why I'm like, this isn't Sony's fault. Because from all accounts, they try very hard to keep Destiny alive. Plus, outside of January, they haven't been affected by layoffs, to be honest. Uh, granted, uh, that could just be because new management understands what to do for games and is taking the Nintendo approach, but whatever. Eek! Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed. Here's why I'm disappointed. Everyone knows that I used to absolutely adore Des uh, Destiny. Bungie. You did. I did. Bungie has been one of my, like, championed companies, along with Obsidian. Uh, because, uh, Bungie was basically an indie company. It was until very recently when they allowed Sony to buy them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they were. Mm -hmm. They didn't have money. They were all, their own studio. Wait, no, 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 okay. no. The revisionist history, because you're forgetting about the fact that they were a first party developer for, for Microsoft, Microsoft they were. for a long time. They were. And then they broke off. And which, then they then they broke off, but then they had a publishing deal with Activision and then only went independent for about two years. They did. And I thought that they were a great success story. And then they allowed Sony to buy them. 
I don't know what happened because they are they prided themselves as being a very ethical company. And then this happens. I'm massively disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I'm so disappointed. I have championed Destiny for years. Frick, I keep saying Destiny. Bungie. Bungie. Uh, for years. And then to find out that this has happened, I am just very disappointed. Like, I can't even. I'm just super disappointed. 24 cars. Why? Why? All at the cost of 20, 220 employees. I am so disappointed. So let me ask this leading question. I don't expect anyone to ever answer because sure. it is merely meant for comedic value. Anyone still want Bungie to take back over of Halo? I mean, if I'm honest, yes, just because Halo is crap. But I mean, at this point, it doesn't mean it would be any better. It was never going to be any better. I think Halo is dead. Halo is dead. I have to agree, Pete. And I hate saying Microsoft, that. But... Microsoft killed it once they gave it over to 343. Yep. Absolutely. Whereas the Coalition took over Gears of War and it's been going steady ever since, <laughs> I... to some degree. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see what e we'll see what e day looks like though. But holy crap! Yeah, I'm so disappointed in Bungie right now. <laughs> no. Anyway, let's. Shall we have a palate cleanser? Because I've got one more story yes, that I've decided to add in. Yes, please. Just. Uh, so, oh, by the way, the rumor is they are remaking Halo One next. Why? Why? They already did anniversary edition. Why? <laughs> to play on the Master Chief Collection. Oh, goodness. Terrible. What the frick are they doing? Anyway, let's have a, let's have a little palate cleanse, shall yes, we? Yes, please. This is a short, but I'd say a nice, nice-ish story. Because um, do you know how Discord are now owned by by um, PlayStation? I didn't know that. I haven't been on Discord in a very long time. <laughs> Till now. She says, whilst actually using Discord say, to make this cool. Yeah. Till now. But anyway, so they they kind of are partially owned by PlayStation, I'm sure. Right. Okay. So I'm pretty sure they bought a, like a majority. I say majority. They bought several shares in them. But okay. This comes. I wouldn't say as a surprise because it's quite a good thing. Because uh, it seems that Discord have been making a lot of integration in terms of console usage over the last couple of years, such as PlayStation right. and Xbox. Okay. And the most recent update has confirmed that Microsoft and Discord have announced the next suite of features are coming to integration with the Xbox. Oh. So okay. the highlights include the ability to watch streams directly on the Xbox Series X or S or Xbox One console. If they're sharing their screen from PC, mobile, or another Xbox, they're able to watch whatever they're playing. Which I think is a really good idea. Okay. It is something you can do on, obviously, Discord and PC. But now you've got it on Xbox. Well, that's cool. I didn't even know that was a thing, so... Nope. So, use... Well, I did it a couple of weeks ago when I shared my screen to do with that... Oh, um, yes. Um, Famcom De Detective Club story I was talking about. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, but users can now call their friends directly from Xbox consoles. The oh. update will also unify the Xbox friend list, friends list and the Discord friends list Ooh. if players opt into it. So before, what used to happen, is I actually have a friend who was doing this, uh -huh. is you had to connect the call via a mobile, then transfer it to the Xbox console really? to do it like that. I yeah, it was didn't a know that. complete pain in the bum. So now, rather than that, you can actually just call straight off of Discord. But, okay. Now, is that different? Xbox. Because when over on Mags' channel, he does community night every mm -hmm. Wednesday. And we would all be in the community chat. Yeah. And I would do that from Xbox. So is that not the same thing? Yeah, but that's now what essentially they're doing it is that you don't actually have to connect your phone or your tablet but, to be able to to join the call this might have been that. wow that is quite a surprise because clearly you have not think this has been a, a, an ongoing problem for some people oh right okay 
Oh, that's yeah. new to me. So okay. One of my gaming group, every time we used to play, would be like, yeah, sorry, I'm just connecting my phone to my Xbox. Oh, right. Okay, that's very weird to me. Okay. Yeah, but okay. now it's coming up. So you know where your friends tab is on the Xbox guide? Yes. If you opt into it, it will now actually show your Discord communities as well. And you can just call straight off rather than actually doing party chats. I could chats. have swore it was already doing that. I could be wrong. I didn't think it was, but this this yeah. feature okay. has only been only That's came in so weird very recently. I like I said, the only Discord I've ever done on Xbox is through Mags' mm -hmm. community channel. So he he may have already had that enabled through maybe. like some beta program or whatever. I don't know. That's crazy. Anyway. Uh, this So there's a new unified list that's happening, uh, that's found under happening now alongside Xbox friends in parties and games. Right. Discord users can jump into a voice channel. So that's, so yeah, you can, so any servers that have voice channels, you can now jump into them. So That's so weird to me because, okay, that's weird. So watch a friend streaming or initiate a call all from their console. Right. It might have been that it was in the Xbox um, beta program as well. So Maybe, maybe. So those, yeah, because there are people who have obviously opted in for that sort of thing. So right. it might have been something that was tested first and this is now going out on general release. So if friends are currently talking or streaming their game in the Discord server voice channel, that channel is now shown in the Happening Now tab. Uh, these features are beginning to roll out in the coming weeks starting today. And for those in the, there you go, for those in the Xbox Insider program, with global availability oh. soon to follow. There you go. So mm -hmm. pro he's probably in, someone's probably in the yeah. Xbox Insider program. I know that I am. So. Well, there you go. That's probably why you've had that available to you. So there we are. Okay. Cool. Very Palette interesting. Palette cleanser. Now you can communicate with more people more times. Very cool. On your on, on your on your crap console that no one wants to play on anyway. Uh huh. <laughs> PC. PC Master Race. No, I'm joking. I'm not an elitist. Uh huh. Very cool. Funny, funny how I can just go and join a Discord call on my PC and then just carry on playing a game. It's great, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> None of all this nonsense of having to sign in on my mobile and then signing in on my Xbox. And... Yeah. Christ. That's so crazy. That's wild. Oh, oh, look. I'm just going to open this game. Oh, look. Discord's already open. Cool. Done. Even some some games even show that you can use the Discord party channel, party chat, like yeah. Rocket League. Yes. <laughs> oh goodness. Anyway, that's us done for this week for in terms of stories. Holy crap! Well, then we can wrap this show up, which is what we'll do, and then we'll chill sure. with our chat. Um. I actually have not finished a bottle of wine. Can you believe that, Pete? Plenty of time to do so. There's plenty of time, but I might use that for after the after show. That's um, what I meant. What? That's what I meant. Oh, plenty yes. Plenty of time to do that. Uh, but we do thank our lovely, lovely listeners out there uh, for sticking with us. Um, you guys are amazing. But you can always come check us out at twitch.tv forward slash rapid reviews where you can join in on the conversation uh and see what we get up all the hijinks that we get up to mm -hmm. um but pete where else can they enjoy your dulcet tones here uh-huh <laughs> And you can listen to us on the most recent episode of the Neville Watchers podcast, which is um, sent solely on Deadpool and Wolverine. Mm. So uh had a chance to obviously go and see it. Kurt also went to see it quite recently. And we literally spoke about it uh, about an hour, a few hours after he got back from the cinema. So it was fresh on his mind. It was Very cool. cool. Uh, so yeah, that's on most good streaming, uh, audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts and uh, all of that. Yeah. Oh dear. Um, uh, so, Nana, if you want to do some band hammering. Yeah. So yeah, please go and check that out. Um, the June part two episode is on ongoing at the moment because I've been having a lot of issues with the audio, so I've got to try and figure that out soon. Right. Okay. That does happen. Unfortunately. It does. So yeah, I'm just just trying to 
work it so that it's actually listenable. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow everything with it, the everything else I'm doing, rapid reviews, radio, di- um, Discord. I'm over on a few other Discords as well, and uh, our radio pod on Twitter, although I don't yeah. use it much. It's true. Uh, Howdy. I... What about your streaming? What about your I return to the socials? Now. I do a streaming thing. I do the thing. Um, and also, uh, thank you, uh, Nana, for ban hammering. Um, but if you are out there and you don't have much to do, um, you know, because things and stuff, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes in between, but definitely Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 p.m. UK time, over on K-I-L-E-Y underscore W-I-L-D-E. Uh, I stream now. Please come join me. I'm very lonely, and I need friends to talk to. I have zero friends. Um, And I play... FPS is on Monday, and I play weird games on Wednesday, and I play scary games on Friday. And then sometimes I'll do sneaky little streams of Hitman or um, House Flipper. I forgot the name of it because I was reading what Nana put in the chat. Uh, But holy crap, my Hitman videos are doing some numbers over on YouTube. So maybe come watch me play Hitman on my sneaky streams. I don't really have a set time for those. That's just when I get lonely. And then I'm like, I'm sad. I'm going to play now. Yeah, they're not always at the same time. So don't worry no, about that, Jenny. They are not predictable whatsoever. Um, but no. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are absolutely predictable. Um and I, I just, just come chill with me. Uh, Jenny says, I tend to do kid dinner and bedtime stuff 6.30 to 9-ish. I know, which sadly is usually when I'm streaming um, on the Not Monday, always. Wednesday, and Friday. Um, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I was, I forgot what I was saying. Was it's all right, because uh, I, might, I might start streaming again soon. That might be after 9. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for friends. I'm a very lonely person. Uh, I don't talk to a lot of people in real life. Uh, cause I'm, I'm really old. <laughs> so it doesn't look like it, but I am actually really old. So I don't communicate with lots of humans. Um, I'm but... older. Screw off. What? I said, I'm older, screw off. <laughs> but um, if you can come join me and we'll just have a lot of fun and I'll do silly, stupid stuff because uh, I don't play games very well. But that's the fun part. I don't play them very well and we get to laugh about it uh, and stuff. But So that's what I have to say about that. Um <laughs> Ah, Jenny says, what? Pete, you look like you're 28. That's very... I wish. I love it. That's amazing. (laughs) Yep. Uh, (laughs) We will not reveal our ages on this podcast. You can check it out on other episodes. But I had a haircut to get rid of the gray hairs. Oh goodness. I'm getting a haircut next week on Monday. Uh it's gonna be a wild haircut. But anyway, we'll save that for after show, shall we? Oh yeah, we'll do that for after show. So come join us at yeah. Show TV forward slash rabbit reviews. Um anyway, I think that's gonna do it for us. So as I say every week, thank you for joining us. And we will see you and talk to you next week. Bungie, you suck. Thus ends the podcast portion, and now we can drink and cuss and smoke and stuff. Um. <laughs> uh, I will be back momentarily. Okay, Pete. But anyway, chat, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I actually have not finished an entire bottle of wine. 
which is a cray cray. All right, I can hear you again now. Oh, good. Um, but yes, I. I'm really annoyed that we had to ban hammer somebody. Oh well, happens. It happens, but it's annoying. Um, it's fine. Oh my gosh, my channel has been getting so much spam. So much spam. It's crazy. And spam. Yes, cans of spam. Uh, but anyway, chat, how are you lovely people doing tonight? Um, what are your plans for the week? Uh, as I, I'm going to finish this bottle of wine. I have to go to the gym first thing in the morning and I'm going to be hung over. Of course you that's, are. That's how I'd I expect roll. nothing less. Exactly. Uh, Denker says, well, the redemption tab isn't in stock to get you drinking. Yeah, I'm very confused about that. So I'm going to try and fix that afterwards. But that's okay. I will redeem this for you, Denker. <laughs> But it is very strange. Uh, why that is I... weird. Let's see. Jenny says, I have to pick up more kids and have four kids for the week. Yes, I I, I definitely know that. Poor Jenny. Poor Good Jenny. God, that's, that, that's a quick turnaround for kids. Uh, yeah, but she's also going to be driving over to uh, Timeless. Uh, Brent says, my parents are visiting, so they'll be here when the storm hits. Oh, wow. Oh, right, okay. Wow. Well, hopefully things go okay with the storm yeah oh dear dear and dear oh dear um probably won't have game night till the storm passes that's probably a good idea actually um yeah probably worth hopefully it passes with nothing you know no problems whatsoever um but i have zero plan I'm just going to go to the gym. I literally have no life. Um, yeah, ex uh, chat's wishing Brent all the luck in the world. Absolutely. Mm, I do as well. Absolutely. But I have zero life, so I will be streaming all week. Don't worry, all I've got is work as well, so oh, goodness. more crap to sort out with wedding, so yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> one of my uh, trainers was like, Kylie, do you even work in the summer? I'm like, I actually don't. I push a button and all my automatic jobs happen, so I just get paid for like literally pushing a button during the, the summer. residuals. Yep. I really have a nice life. <laughs> Complain a lot about being lonely, but oh, Jenny, that oh, Christ, I'm jealous. Oh, I have to look. I have to look now. I went to an amazing wedding yesterday. There were alpacas, and we're hitting arcades and car museums. Oh, I am jelly. I'm so jelly. Uh, and it's, I would probably be doing the same old, same old. That see, that's me. Nothing wrong with same old, same old. Uh, and mini golf. Oh, yep. Yeah, I played mini golf in April with Max. I really like mini golf. Max. I like normal golf as well, and I don't even get to play that now for the next couple of weeks. Max beat me, by the way. I beat me at golf. That's what I mean. Um, it was very fun. I did miss it. We played with my trainer and his wife. Who is who I'm probably going to go watch Deadpool with. Uh, Hurry up. I want to talk about it. Yeah. So I'll probably well, be doing with you that anyway. this week. Yeah. I'll check with him tomorrow and see if we're yeah. going. And then we'll go. Straight after the gym. Perfect time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. We're going to smell really nice. <laughs> so basically like every normal Marvel cinematic universe oh, fan goodness. who goes to a cinema anyway. That's very true. That's very true. Um... <laughs> We do. We smell awful. I, it's so funny. Uh, especially when he has to take my measurements, which I think he has to do on Tuesday. And he'll come, like, off of his, like, intense, crazy, insane workout. Or he's sweating a bucket. Just, yeah. And it's like, and then he's, like, measuring me, like, 
around my neck and around just everything. Oh, and it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> well, he's got the arms up. He's like the old yeah. pits that sweat exactly. and stank. You know? It's like, there's that gym smell. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, hopefully, I will get to Deadpool and Wolverine this week. Let me know when you do. Yeah. I think you will probably like it. I think I'll love it. It's just I'm so weird right now. I just am not going out in public right now. Oh, I know, but that, I think that shot. needs... Uh, yeah, but <laughs> just need a... Jenny says, yeah, e, I want to go too. I wish I wish I lived closer to Jenny. <laughs> <sighs> Me and Jenny are totally going to do something soon. We are. I'm going to fly over there. You should. I am. Uh, I just don't know what yet. <laughs> uh, you'll be flying over here in like, I know. just over a month. Just, yeah. It's cray cray. I know. It's going to be Madness. fine. And that's all I'll say, Pete. Good, because I don't want to know. Yep. Uh, aw. Nana says, bring back grins and giggles, but live. You yes, should. me and Jenny would be great. Uh, yes. I wish we did. Uh, did have we, sorry, I didn't see what the actual results of the poll were. Yeah. Oh, I missed thanks, it too. Thanks for doing that, by the way, no. Oh, no, I missed the poll. Uh, it's <laughs> great. Um, maybe after the summer. Yes, exactly. Understandable with children. Well, it, it's so many things are happening. They really are. Um, mm. But then, yeah, after the summer, like, Jenny will be back streaming and stuff like that. So it'll yeah, be all good. That. All good in the hood. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. uh, Yakuza 0 won with 75% of the vote. Okay. Pete. Well, Very looks good. like I'm conti I will continue with Yakuza 0 on stream then, but I will play Infinite oh. Wealth on my own so that I've actually got games to talk about in 2024. Uh, Jenny says, any recommendations for what to watch at the cinema that's kid-friendly at the Mo? I keep hearing that Despicable Me 4 is actually not too bad. Oh, goodness. No, apparently it's sort of a bit of a return, because I've not really liked the Despicable Me films since 2. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at my local cinema. Hang on. See if there's any... Mags used to love Minions. <laughs> mm. uh, Inside Out 2 had rave reviews mm. as well. That's supposed to be good. I've heard that. But obviously, it's coming towards the end of its theatrical run, so it's probably yeah. going to be more difficult to find tickets for that. Oh, no! Ginny's in ads! Oh, well. Crap. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You can take the kids to Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm sure it's the right family run. Uh-huh. No, I'll, I'll, I won't do that joke. That's terrible. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it is not. Oh, my goodness. I have drank an entire bottle of wine. My of friend. course you have. But I haven't drank in like two or three weeks. Which is insane when you think about it. Oh, man. I know. No, I mean, there's, um, in my local cinema, there is a showing of Spider-Man 2 Ooh. on Friday. Very nice. I can't justify going to see that. Oh, goodness. I can't do it. Holy crap. What a week. Uh, then says, I just got through, I just got through your notification that you're alive, which is pointless now. That Never is insane. Pointless. Thank you for telling me, Danker, because that is insane. I Never wondered, pointless. because this has not been our most, uh, active Yeah, well, we've episode. had people. But we've had a loyal dedicated we've had group our, yes people. we've had our loyal dedicated group which i love and adore um no mike tendo though which i was a bit no disappointed mike tendo, exactly. i'm gonna i'm gonna have words with the man i was a little bit surprised no mike tendo race um a couple other people i'm a little surprised not to see but yeah yeah it is what it is 
it is what it is. Unfortunately, so yes. Yes. But it's fine. We got we we got our regulars. It's good. Yes, exactly. And you guys are amazing, and we appreciate you so so much, like so much. Yeah. Um. Uh, I didn't didn't raise these in the news stories. Uh-huh. Um. Mostly because you don't tend to care about fighting games. Oh right. Okay. Uh, did I, I know you probably wouldn't have seen it, but uh, they showed off what Terry actually is going to look like in game oh, for Street Fighter Six. Right. Okay. He looks a bit weird. Oh goodness! They didn't show off his moves; they just showed off his character model and in his teaser trailer. And he looks okay. It just doesn't. Right? I'm just not sure it fits. Oh, interesting! Very interesting. Ooh, Jenny's back. Yeah. Uh, so Jenny, I said Despicable Me Four and Inside Out Two, which I've heard good things haven't. about. I yeah, I have as well. I've never seen Inside Out. Um, I hated the first one though. Well, here's what's funny. So it's not a secret. I am what is called a Aspie, which is means I have Aspergers. Which is like, if you want to say it's autistic, it's like high functioning autism. I actually don't think it's autism, but that's just me. Whatever. Anyway, so the uh, counselor slash therapist that I was seeing at the time, she was like, mm. "You need to see Inside Out. Inside Out will explain so much about normal humans and their emotions." It probably will, yeah, but still. I have yet to see it because I'm just like, ew, emotions, ew. <laughs> True. Yeah, I just so I have didn't yet really to see it. I think it was a very good film, personally. She absolutely recommended it. She was like, it will teach you so much. Um, and I'm just like, ew, peepees. Mm. I don't want peepees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, we need, a, we need a, an episode name. Uh, I thought we had one. Because I'm not quite sure that I can go with my original title of Fuck Destiny and Fuck Bungie. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Uh, is it, Jenny? See, I just, I'm, I'm so funny about emotions. I'm like, I, do oh, I feel... you know, you know what? I think the Bungie Bungle could work quite Ooh, well. Ooh, that could work. Oh, I'm doing it. Screw okay, it. Do that. I'm going with the Bungie Bungle. That works. There you go. Bungie becomes bungled. Ha! <laughs> that works. Nice. Me and Nana are on the same page there, clearly. Yep, Nana said it too, yep. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's so funny. I like. She was like, I want you to do homework and you need to go watch Inside Out. Oh, my dang, cause that's a good one as well. Bungie jumped. Uh, Bungie snapped. <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, I'm gonna have to go with the first one though, because which bungee it, it, bungled? It, bungee, be, bungee becomes bungled. It's just because the alliteration. Yeah, I love it. Good one, now. Uh, <laughs> you, you get episode title this week. Ta-da! <laughs> oh goodness! I've been sat there literally like for the last five minutes, going, "What am I gonna name this? What the hell?" Yeah. I've had this edited by now, but there I'm waiting go. for a name. Oh yeah, so the other piece of fighting game news that came out from well, there was loads actually that came out from Evo. Uh-huh. Uh, Tekken Tekken Eight announced their newest character that's coming to the DLC. Oh. Um, the man who will not ever die has returned. Who's that? Uh, the man who has been thrown into a volcano now twice. Oh dear. Heihachi Mishima. Oh goodness! There you go. You... Yeah, even though um. Harada had confirmed he is definitely dead a few weeks ago. Has now, has now gone. What oh, the hell? Dear. Honestly, I'll send it to you. If not, is there a way that we can play videos live on stream? Uh, there is, but you'd have to share your screen. Uh, with the sound option as well. That I don't know because I've never done it before. Okay, we might have to figure that out because I actually okay. wanted to show some of the crowd reactions when he was revealed because it is brilliant. Very cool. I'll see if I can find anything. So. Anyway, chat, we have about seven more minutes. If you want to just talk about anything, just throw it at us. And I have now completed an entire bottle of wine. So that's a thing that happened. <laughs>
Ah! While Pete looks this video up. Uh. Yeah, I'd need to share the sound for this because it's so much better, obviously. Right. We'll have to figure that one out. I'm sure yeah. we will. Well, I'll um I'll link it in the chat anyway, yeah, so people do can that. watch it do at their that, own leisure. For sure. Yeah. It is it is great though because there is a moment in the trailer where you see his iconic mustache and it's like oh goodness people know straight away and then it's the full reveal and it's like oh my god it just blows the roof off it's oh, great oh goodness superb <laughs> which brings me on to the next point right as well. okay um Evo yes. So I'm doing a fighting game roundup here in the post show because why not? Right. Uh, Evo has confirmed its dates for next year. Ooh, very good. Okay. Uh, there is an award show in California in March. Nice. It is returning. There is Evo Japan returning next year in, in March or April, I believe. Uh, they're going back to Vegas in July or August. Ooh. And then they've got... Evo France Ooh, in very October. Cool. Very And cool. guess who's already booked their flights to go? Who would that be, Pete? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. That's amazing. That's very cool. Very cool. Someone's not missing out on Evo France. Of course I was going. Of course. Very good, Pete. Very good. I've been well, waiting for it to come to Europe for years. So I was like, oh, cool. Finally, I get to go again. Yeah, and for people who don't know, uh, Pete went to the Las Vegas one. I did in 2019. and went over too. It was great. It was fantastic. I flew all that way to play two games. Yeah, but you met really cool people. I did. I met a few cool people. Very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be going again this time. Try and do better than my last output. Yes. I don't know, like, it obviously depends on the games that are there, but I don't know what the hell I'm even going to play. <laughs> oh, um, goodness. It'll, I've got about 18 months to get good at Street Fighter 6, I guess. Well, there you go. I I can't lie, like, no matter what came of it, uh, TwitchCon was so much fun, Pete. And yeah. being able to go there and play, like, the retro games that we played. Mm. was absolutely amazing like i it was just so it was just cool it was just great so if you can get to something like evo or or, or twitchcon or any game convention yeah I, I highly encourage it um because you're 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 surrounded by people who are like-minded like you are um it's just fun. Like that's all I can really say to it. It's just fun. TwitchCon was uh, so much fun. It really yeah, was. Yeah, I would agree as well. It's it's brilliant. Like just seeing people there, like yeah. in person, just chatting yes. away. Because the like the one takeaway that I had from Evo was that I met some cool people. Mm -hmm. I didn't get keep in contact with many of them, but it was cool to hang around well, with them on the day and exactly. chat away and all that and Honestly, like, I was in a very weird place at the time anyway because I was still new to meeting new people and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, you know what was going on at that I time. Do. I won't divulge those information. But um, uh, but it was when I was playing games, this is the most valuable experience that I had in the whole time I was there. Yeah. It was actually that the people that I played against in Smash were well were more than willing to give advice and techniques and all that uh, and happily answer questions yeah. like after the fact it was like how the hell did you do that what can i do to counteract this next time i come across this and actually yeah. like whilst i was watching through the street fighter 6 finals like from evo of this last year there was a 17 year old kid from the uk who made it to the top three and he ended up facing off against the eventual runner-up and in the first game that he, the first set that he lost against this guy in the winner's side, was asking him questions, and they were like talking away, yeah. and he ended up like, like they ended up facing each other again. It was like See. you've just given away your tech, but Jesus Christ, like <laughs> more than willing to help out this this young no, kid to learn that. his craft a lot more. It's great. Absolutely love that. I do. I do. Brilliant. Like, I yeah. do love that sort of thing. Absolutely. And, you know, as much bad rap as the fighting game community has gotten over the years because of 
some pretty shady shite that's happened. I mean, yeah. And some disgusting people that yes. were involved in it. Yeah. Uh, the vast majority of people in that community are actually pretty cool. That's very cool. That's Smash very community, cool. not so much, but you know. Yeah. Street Fighter community and the FGC as a whole are generally pretty all right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I, 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 I just love the gaming community as a whole. I mean, uh, Pete and I went to WSD and we got to meet people that have been on our show. I mean, that sounds weird, but it's true. You know, we got to meet them in person and it, it, it's just, there's just this kind of like, I'm going to say brotherhood, but you know what I mean? Brotherhood, sisterhood. <laughs> uh gaming community and togetherness and the togetherness yes which i love all of that and then again even being at twitchcon and seeing people that i follow here on twitch i got to meet them in person um it's just amazing i i can never fault those experiences they're amazing absolutely no neither can i they're great i I do really enjoy those yeah yeah we had some of the best times yeah, we yeah, had a some lot of the best times that I've had is like the WSD. is at WSD and mm-hmm. conventions generally because oh yeah, I do generally like quite like to meet people. It's great. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm such a nerd. I just want to meet people. <laughs> mm. And it, we we've said it before. Like Jack Tindo was there at WSD, and I got to meet his lovely, beautiful family, and it yeah. was it was very touching and amazing. Um, and everything. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah. Oh, it's not the first time that I've met them. It won't be the last because no. actually it was really cool. Like, um, I met Jack at that um Princess Beach event, and we yes. ended up, like we ended up spending the entire like night together. It was great, yeah. and then we travelled back some of the way home because he was going in the same somewhat in the same direction and had to change over at a different tube station. But uh, uh, now- it was cool. I absolutely am, I'm already going to agree with what Jenny says, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. I don't like making sweeping generalizations, but I think because there's a lot of neurospicy people in gaming, we can all get together and not feel weird, maybe. That's exactly Correct. actually what I'm talking about. Because um, even uh, I am going to say uh, Jack Tindo's uh, wife and, and children, they like we connected you know, and immediately she hugged me and said, thank you so much because she saw that I am also Nero Spicy and it was okay. It was okay to, to, to be there and be nervous around people. And, and, you know, like she didn't have to, she didn't have to hide her, 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 herself or her children. I hope that's coming out the right yeah. way i hope i'm 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 communicating what i'm trying to say um, i think you are yeah and uh i absolutely adore that for that reason i do not i i'm very very clear that i am a, i have asperger's i'm an aspie which means that i struggle um with social things uh and the fact that when we you know when pete and i go to these um gaming conventions or whatever I'm just absolutely drawn to these people, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And, and the reason why I'm drawn to them is exactly what Jenny says. They're neuro spicy. They're, they're every one of us are, are on some sort of spectrum. <laughs> and, uh, I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I yeah. just, ah, I just love it. Uh- I have one last thing that I do want to bring up as well, sure. just as a brief discussion point. Sure. Did you hear about the news of a new t- a new series coming to Amazon Prime in October? What would that be, Pete? It is Like a Dragon, Yakuza. Is it really? The teaser trailer is out now. Is it really? Is yep. it like... Oh, there he is. Mike Tendo has appeared. Oh, no! Is it like real active, like actors, or is it? Yep. Oh yep. wow! Oh cool. Uh, even to the point, I'll read. I'll read some of this because it's okay. not overly interesting. Okay. But uh, the headline from VGC is uh, Rio Go uh, Gagataku or RGG Studios, basically. Okay. 
uh, boss says the end of Like a Dragon episode one made him scream and take a cigarette break. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I am, Very interesting. Um, I didn't think I was going to look forward to this. But I think I'm going to look forward to this. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Mike says, Amazon heard Pete were playing a game and thought, quick, let's make a live action series. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Uh, y yes. Um, I'm not going to promise anything, but Tuesday, 9 p.m., I might carry on with Yakuza 0. And I'll have the headset on this time. That, yes, that would be good, Pete, since we can actually hear you talk. Please be in the chat so I can, act, so you can actually yes. tell me that I'm not a fucking idiot. You're not an idiot. You didn't know. Um, <laughs> but... No, I think I know what happened because I like I went... I had a knock at the door, so I turned my mic on mute and then that was it. Um, okay. Hello, Mike. Well, it's funny that Mike turned up just as we are ending the show. <laughs> Correct. But we always timing... love seeing Mike Tindo, best friend of the show. Well, there you go. He he heard us talking about Jack and thought, that's well, right. I better not let that, that scumbag get all the credit. I'm joking. I'm going to call your brother a scumbag. Really. Not at all. We were actually talking about how amazing him and his family were. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's fine. The, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll call him the number two diver, shall we? <laughs> is, he, is he still the number two diver? Uh, Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, he's, he's no, best it's friend. the endless, the endless ocean. Yes, like. endless ocean. But he is best friend of the show because we did promote him uh, to best friend. Uh, we did. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for us for this lovely Sunday evening. Um, I've drank an entire bottle of wine. Woo! Uh, <laughs> so, um, and Pete's still editing the show. Uh, but we do think <laughs> uploading now actually Mike says I'm not even number two maybe a million and two now I don't know about that Slacking. Um, but yes um, we do thank you absolutely lovely wonderful people for joining us as you do every week and it does actually mean so much to us um, and if you want to come see me come check me out I stream three times a week monday wednesday and friday over at k-i-l-e-y underscore w-i-l-d-e i'm lonely please come talk link, to me <laughs> link will be in the show notes for yes. twitch after we have uh finitoed this episode they will be uh, changed yes mike says i have done uh but anyway um thank you so much uh and we will definitely uh be back next week for sure um but I think that's going to do it for us. We shall. So thank you so much. We appreciate each and every one of you. You're all amazing. We love you to death. And we will see you next week. Bye.